So a couple of months ago, I put out this developer portfolio template on my Gumroad, and it's gotten a lot of really, really great feedback. But one of the main questions that I've gotten a whole bunch of times is how I went about putting together this kind of like water drop grid splash effect thing up here in the hero section. Obviously, if you're one of the people who went ahead and grabbed a copy of that, you would have been able to dig in and actually figure out how this works. I also added a version of this to hover.dev for anybody who's checked that out, but I just wanted to take a little bit of time today to break down this animation specifically so we could check out how this works. It's actually super, super easy. We're going to be using an animation library called Anima.js. We're going to be doing this in React using Tailwind as well, but the Tailwind is kind of just a side note. If you want to just use normal CSS, that will totally work as well. But I think that's probably enough talking about it and looking at the pretty animation. So let's go ahead and jump into the code. So I've got a pretty bare bones React component already kind of structured out here. Remember, I'm using Tailwind CSS. We'll walk over these stylings in a second, but just to look at what we have here to start, I have up at the top imported the Anima.js library, which I've already installed. Just yarn add or npm install, install Anima.js to get that added to your project. I have this outer wrapping component, which I'm calling water drop grid. Inside of that, I have this wrapping div, which is doing nothing special. It's literally just putting everything in the center of the screen and giving it some background color with a little bit of padding. And then inside of that, I am calling this dot grid component, which I also have defined down here. The one thing we actually need to get started is I have defined how big I want my grid to be in terms of numbers of dots. So I want this to be a 25 by 20 grid. You can totally play around with these numbers. You can make it a 50 by 10 grid or whatever, but adding these numbers here because we're gonna use them in a couple of spots makes it a lot easier to change later. So go ahead and define two variables like this. We can close up this top component, not gonna need that anymore. All of our work is gonna be done down here. There's gonna be two steps to this. So the first piece is going to be actually generating our grid with these dimensions. We're gonna do that just with a couple of for loops, store a bunch of divs or spans or whatever in a list, and then add those into our div for our, GS or our JSX that we're gonna be returning. And then once we've got all that set up, we'll actually add the animation. So to start with that first step, I'm going to define an array. I'm gonna call this dots. This is going to store all of our little JSX items. And then under that, I'm also going to store what I'm calling index. Make sure this is a let because we're gonna to have to change this later. What this index value is gonna represent is the number of dot that we're currently on. So we're gonna generate whatever 500 little dots for this grid. And whenever we click on one, we're gonna be able to wanna to be able to say, okay, you just clicked on the 175th dot. So this index is just gonna be a counter so we can actually keep track of that. If that doesn't make sense right this second, it'll probably make sense in you know five minutes or whatever. Once we've defined these, we're gonna to want to run two nested for loops, should look something like this. These are just normal for loops starting at zero and then running up to the width and the height of our grid. We're doing this so that we can generate the number of dots that we actually need for our grid. You can also just multiply these numbers together and have one for loop. I just like doing it with two just because it looks a little bit easier to read whenever you have these separated to me personally, but that's up to you. Inside of this, we're going to want to start pushing some elements onto our dots array here. I'm just going to use divs. So we'll start by pushing an empty div like this and we can define our classes for this. We're going to come back to this little group class here in a second. That is a tailwind group, but everything else in here is kind of just based on how I like this to look. So I'm giving this a cursor of crosshair. Thought that looked kind of cool. Rounded full, a little bit of padding, transition colors, because whenever I hover this, I then want to make the background this color. This group class is just marking this outer div as a group so that inside of this div, I can add uh, extra tailwind styles for things like group hover. Essentially what that's going to let me do is anytime I hover this outer div, I can programmatically change styles on the inner div. You'll see a little bit more of that in just a second. Now that I've got that added, I can add a couple of more props to this div. The first being what I'm calling data index. Index. You can call this data banana or data whatever if you want to. All that you need to know is that we now want to pass in this index value, which we're keeping track of right here. This way, each of our divs has a reference to which number in the list it actually is that we can then pull off later in our handle click. We're also going to need to add a key so that React doesn't flip out whenever we actually try to add this to the DOM. For my example, I'm just using INJ and then making sure to put some kind of delineator between the two so you don't have any kind of collisions. You can imagine that if you just put these right next to each other, then an I of 17 and a J of nine or something would be the exact same number when you put them next to each other as an I of one and J of 79 or whatever the number is that I said. Point being, they would all be 179. So just make sure that you have some kind of delineator between the two. That is going to be it for our outer div though. We can now add our little dot div in the middle. It's gonna just be a self-closing div like this and we can add some classes to that. First things first, we're gonna need some kind of class which is specific just to this dot. I'm calling it dot point. You could call this whatever you want, but later when we run our animation, we're gonna need some way of actually running a CSS selector so that we can grab the elements. So we just need some kind of unique class here. For the rest of the stylings, 
I'm adding a height of two, width of two, rounded full so it's a circle, and then just some gradient colors because I thought it looked nice with a gradient. You can definitely just make this a flat color though if you'd like to. The one other thing in here that's kind of important is that I'm setting the opacity to 50. Later, we're gonna be animating the opacity from 50 up to one and then back to 50. So we wanna set it to 50 so it actually starts at that value. We'll also need to add our data index value to this div just in case you click on the actual little dot itself and not the surrounding area. And then finally, we're just going to need to increment our index number so that it actually keeps going up for each loop. That's going to be it for our dots. I'm gonna go ahead and close that up and then down here on our wrapping div we can start adding some of these styles we're going to add grid to this in just a second but to actually define our columns for this we're going to want these to be flexible so what i'm doing is passing in style with grid template columns using a template literal and then saying i want however wide our grid is so say 25 in this case columns of just even fractions. So one FR, we're just gonna get an evenly sized grid. Below that, we can actually add our grid styling. So just adding a class name of grid with a width of fit content. And then finally, we can just actually add in our dots. After we save that, we should now have our grid. Clicking on it shouldn't actually do anything, but we should get our little hover stylings and everything like that. Obviously, this isn't super interesting without the clicks. So let's go ahead and add that piece. First, I'm gonna define our function up here at the top. I'm gonna call it handle.click, and this is going to take in an event. And we're going to want to add this handle.click function to our outer wrapping div on our dot. Remember that I've already imported Anima.js up here at the top, and we can actually run this animation by just using this default export that comes from Anima.js. This is going to take in an object where we define all of our different values, the first of which is going to be this targets attribute, which is the selector for what we actually want to animate. So remember I said that we needed some kind of unique identifier on our little dot down here. This is where that comes into play. For actually defining what CSS values we want to animate, the way that this works with Anima is that we just pass in as a key to this object, the actual name of the CSS property. For instance, I want to start with scale, and then this is going to take an array of all of our different stops of our animation. So for instance, I want to go from whatever the default is, and then I want to increment uh, or animate up to a scale of 1.35. There's a handful of different other properties that you can pass to this as well, but the ones that I want are to define some kind of easing as well as a duration in milliseconds for how long I want the animation to run. After I animate up to 1.5, I want to animate back down to a value of one. I just played with all these values. I will have all the documentation for this down in the description. I'm not going to walk over every single possible value for this, but feel free to check that out on your own. For this specific animation, I'm also going to want to animate translate Y and opacity. What's really going to give you the coolest part of this effect is going to be this translate Y piece of zero to minus 15 back to zero. I'll show you guys in a second what happens if you actually increase this number, you can get some pretty cool effects. If we save that now, I should be able to go ahead and click one of these little dots and all of them should animate at the same time. Obviously this could be a cool effect in some cases, but we want this to stagger. So let's go ahead and add that piece as well. Down under my opacity and my scale and everything, I can go ahead and close those. I'm going to add a key for delay. You could just pass in a straight number for, you know, number of milliseconds you want to delay. But what we want to do instead is pass in this anima.stagger function. And the first value of this is just going to be how long you want to stagger between each. So I'm going to say hundred milliseconds to start. If you pass in nothing else and click on something, you should now see that it's going to start to actually run our animation, but it's just going to go one at a time. This is not exactly what we want. Obviously we want this to be based off of the grid. So to actually define that, I'm going to come back over to our stagger and I'm going to pass in a second property, which is going to be an object. We can define the size of our grid using this grid key and then passing it in the width and the height of our grid, which again, we've defined up here. And then finally, we just need to say where in the grid we actually want to start from. Remember that down here, I had you add this data index value. We can then pull that value off of the data set on our click event on e.target. So e.target.dataset.index is going to give us the number of where we actually want to start this animation. You can also pass in a couple of string values. So center first or last, which do exactly what they sound like. Ours, we want to go from wherever we click. So we're just going to keep this as it is. And that should be all of it. So now if we come over to our example, go ahead and click on anywhere that we want in this grid, we should get this cool kind of like splash like effect. Let's play with this a little bit so you can see what a couple of these other kind of versions of this might look like. Maybe we can come in here, say, let's try making this positive. Maybe we can bump it up to say something like 30. We can make the grid a different size. So maybe we'll make it say 15 by 40 instead or something. So it's like tall. And now let's see what that looks like. So let's like maybe click in here somewhere. We'll see that now it almost looks like it's splashing inwards instead of outwards, which could also be a pretty cool effect. Maybe we'll go back to minus. Maybe we'll put both of these at the same value. Just make it a square, say maybe 30 by 30. Zoom out a click or two so we can see the whole thing. And let's try that. So you'll see that the higher we make this translate Y value, the more kind of dramatic this effect looks. And maybe we can bump this up even to say 60. Let's try that. That might be a little bit too much. We'll see. Yeah, cool. 
The point just being, you can take this template, you can tweak it, and you can get all kinds of really, really cool effects. Again, you can grab this code, obviously, in the template. I think I also mentioned hover.dev, which is my website. There's even a free version of this under the other tab. So if you go to other, you should be able to grab all of the code just by coming in here, clicking on code, and you should get pretty much exactly what we have in this example. Just a shameless plug myself here at the end. Like I said, this hover.dev website is my personal website. I actually re released this just a couple of weeks ago. It is an animated UI components library. Think like Tailwind UI or something like that, specifically for React, Tailwind CSS, and primarily Frame or Motion. But as you see from this, we're also doing things like Anima.js and you know even just normal uh, JavaScript and uh, CSS animations, stuff like that. There's a whole bunch of cool free stuff in here. You can just kind of search around, see anywhere where you see this little free tag, you can grab that, make this a little bit bigger so you can actually see it. Anywhere you see free, you can click on code, come in here, copy it to your clipboard and drop that in totally royalty free into your own projects. If you do want to support me, lifetime access is only $27 right now. This goes a massive way to help support me making videos like this, whether it's here or on TikTok or wherever it might be. That would obviously massively appreciate it. I'm adding new components to this literally every single day now, there's probably 50 or 60 of them, something like that right now. I'm trying to build this up to hundreds of components. And like I said, one time, 27 bucks, you're going to get access to this for life. Beyond that, if you learned anything from this, I would massively appreciate a like and a subscribe. It goes a really long way to helping getting my content out there and getting more eyeballs on it. Thanks again. Links in the description. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.